This is Eugene Panrutkovich. I'm the laptop screen doc and today we're going to change a cracked laptop screen on a HP G60-536DX laptop computer. And I'm sorry, the website is www.screensurgeons.com. Okay, so let's talk about the G60 laptop computer. Uh, in 2010 and 2009, I believe this is one of HP's top-selling laptop models, and it's a pretty good laptop computer. But if you have a cracked screen, there's a major problem with the G60. The problem is is that most of the earlier G60s used a 16-inch CCFL LCD screen. And um, the problem with that is it's no longer commonly available, so they're getting very expensive. Now, fortunately for uh, the owner of this laptop computer, he bought a later model which uses a 15.6 inch screen, LED screen, and those are readily available. So he's paying about a hundred dollars less if because he has a 15.6 inch screen instead of a 16 inch screen. Okay, so um, having said that, to determine if you have a 15.6 inch screen or 16 inch screen, you measure with a ruler from here to here. And if you measure 16 inches, you have a 16 inch screen. And if you have measure 15.6 inches, you have a 15.6 inch screen. Another way to tell is to look at the tag here. This says G60-535DX. If you do a Google search on that, and it'll usually bring up the specs of the computer, it'll tell you what kind of screen it is. So for this one, it'll tell you it's a 15.6 inch screen. Okay, um, the next thing with newer HP laptops that we have to worry about it, the way the design is, the screws that you need to remove to remove the plastic frame around the screen are hidden down here. So um, let me bring it in for a close-up. There's, you can see a screw cover here, plastic screw cover here. And let's bring in a close-up. You can see a plastic screw cover here. Okay, so HP has a procedure where you take off, take out the keyboard and take out the top part of this frame to get to the hinges and then remove the screen out with the hinges to get to those screws. Now we have a easier way for you and that easier way uses this really tiny flathead screwdriver. So um, the tools you need are this really tiny flathead screwdriver, an exacto knife blade with a sharp point like this, a pair of metal tweezers, those are very useful, and an electronics screwdriver with a pH 0 bit that's smaller and a pH 1 bit that's larger that you can interchange. And we may need a plastic prying tool, I'm not sure if we'll use it or not, but um, if you don't have anything like that, you can use a guitar pick or a spreading kitchen knife. But I'm not sure we'll use it in this case. Okay, uh, ahead of time I must apologize. The camera is confused about the lighting, so the brightness is going back and forth. So we'll have to put up with it. Okay, uh, let's get started. So the first thing we want to do is remove the little plastic covers that hide the screws. You can see the screws exposed. I usually like to put the plastic cover here so we don't lose it. Do the same thing here. And now for the tricky part, we use this screwdriver to reach in for the screw. And fortunately, this one's not too tight, 
so it comes out fairly easily, like so. Okay, by doing this, we saved about 20-30 minutes worth of work in disconnecting and connecting a lot of connectors, which can sometimes be tricky, but it can be not too bad. Okay, so let's see if we can do this again for this one and once again. It's not too bad. Sometimes if the screw is really tight, it gets a little bit harder. So the first time you start turning, make sure you t you put some force in it so as not to strip the screw. After that, it's not too bad. Okay, that's that was probably the trickiest part of this whole job. Next, what we want to do is remove the plastic frame around the screen. It's also called a bezel, and it's also called casing. So what I like to do is put my fingers on the screen side and gently pry up the screen. If you hear those snapping sounds, that's a good thing because this means the screen, the frame is snapping off. Okay. And let's get to the bottom. Now it looks like the bottom has some adhesive. So what there are several things you can try to get to the bottom. If that's the case, we'll see. We can just lift it up. Okay, so we removed the adhesive. And let's try going like this. Okay, so what worked in this case, if we use our tweezers and just gently pry out, like so. And do the same thing on this side, and it's out. Okay, the reason that I couldn't get it from the back is because the lac is bonded. But okay, so we remove the plastic frame and put it to the side. Now let's look at the screen. The screen, it's an older type of CCFL screen. That means there is a cold cathode backlight and it has its own power supply circuit. And the circuit here is called the inverter circuit and it has a connector that goes to it. So here's the connector and we just pull this one out like so and when we connect it back up we gently squeeze it in there and then push it back in. So that's one connector. Next thing is we want to get to some screws on the side that hold the screen in the metal frame. To do that, we use the larger pH one bit. Remove this screw here and this screw here. Like so and see if we can tilt this whole assembly forward. We want to tilt it enough to get to the screws on the side. So let's take a look at the screws on the side and we can't quite get to it with a larger bit. Let's see if we can get to it with a smaller bit. Yep, we can get to it. You might have to force it a little bit, but it's plastic. It bends. So that's the hardest screw to remove. The rest are fairly easy. Okay, for this one, we go back to the larger pH one bit. And it comes out fairly easily.
like so. Okay, next we turn the computer around and once again we have to get to this screw at the bottom. We have to tilt the screen forward until we can reach it. And it comes out. Done. Two. And three. Okay, now the screen is released from the side frame. So the next thing that you want to do is there's a webcam connector. What you want to do is, let's do the screen forward, see what it looks like in there. Okay, so what you want to do is remove this connector with the tweezer. So gently, and try to pull it out all at once because the wires might snap. So gently push the tabs until it starts to give. And then we can tilt the screen forward. Okay, when you're putting this guy back, don't forget to put this guy back in when you put the screen on or your webcam won't work. All right, so this is what the back of the screen looks like. We remove the video connector. So we pry, peel off the tape, like so. And it's got adhesive on it, so we lift the adhesive and pull it out. Okay, so our screen is released. The CCFL screen looks like this. There's a lamp connector on the bottom left and the video connector on the top right. The part number for this CCFL screen is down here. Let's see if we can get a good focus. It's N156 B3 L02. Now, when you're ordering one, you can just specify, when you do a Google search, is you can just type in G60-535DX screen, and most likely you'll come up with the right screen. There are several vendors that make compatible screens. Uh, the thing to look for is the size, of course. Make sure it's 15.6 inch, and that you have the video connector here, and you have the cable here that goes to the inverter circuit. It's, this is called the inverter cable. And once you get the screen in, I reverse the procedure. Make sure you don't forget to put the webcam connector back in. And uh, slowly put everything in and it should be easier on the way back. And that's it. Once again, my name is Eugene Panrutkovich. I'm the laptop screen doc and the website is www.screensurgeons.com. Thank you and good luck.